Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to look at a classic paper back from 1989. And this is the paper in which Tim Berners-Lee lays out his vision for the architecture of the World Wide Web. The problem that Berners-Lee is trying to solve with this paper is the management of a large body of information created by a large number of people working in a collaborative way. This should be a familiar problem to anyone working in a modern organization, but this was even a problem at CERN back in 1989. And what he proposes as a solution is this idea of hypertext. Even though people at CERN are organized in a hierarchical management structure, that doesn't mean that the way they collaborate and create information follows that structure. Like in any modern organization, people collaborate in a much more freeform manner across management lines. And when you have information or documentation that comes out of that kind of freeform collaboration, you need to understand a lot of surrounding context in order to make sense of it. Things like who wrote this document, what other documents are referred to, to buy this one, what other documents refer to this one, and so on. And this leads Berners-Lee to come to the design constraint for such a system. And the central design constraint is that the method of storing or organizing this information must not place any restraints on the information itself. What does he mean by that? If you take, for example, a hierarchical way of organizing information, that very concept then imposes a constraint on how you organize that information because it must live somewhere in a tree. On the other hand, if you have what he calls a web of notes with links, you can capture this freeform association and this lack of structure with just notes and links between notes. You're not constrained to a predefined notion of how this information must be organized. He makes the analogy of circles as nodes with arrows between these nodes representing links. And this is a very general idea. The nodes themselves could be many things. They could be people or modules or projects, or concepts, or individual documents. So it does not constrain what kind of information you're modeling in your system. Similarly, the arrows or the links between nodes can also have multiple meanings. An arrow between two nodes could imply that one depends on another one, or it could mean that something is a part of another thing, or that something refers to something or uses something. But you see that the general idea is that these nodes and links between nodes can capture a wide variety of meanings without constraining the information that they are capturing. He contrasts this with the idea of organizing information hierarchically in a tree. He does concede that trees have the nice advantage of giving every node a unique name because they have to live somewhere on that tree structure. But the central problem is that information does not always neatly fit into a hierarchical structure. And you often have to do a lot of conceptual gymnastics to get it to fit within a tree structure. The other very common way of organizing information that the author compares his hypertext proposal to is organizing information around keywords. So you associate some keywords with every piece of information and you retrieve that information by invoking those keywords. The problem, however, is that it's very hard for a large number of people to agree on which keywords to associate with a given piece of information. However, if you look at it through the lens of a linked system, keywords can simply become nodes in this linked system and then you can link other documents to this node. And this gives you a nice way of capturing the relationship between a concept or a keyword and the things that refer to it. And these are all the reasons that Tim Berners-Lee 
proposed using a linked information system at CERN. Like he says over here, he did not realize that a term had already been coined for this, hypertext. The term hypertext had been coined back in the 1950s by Ted Nelson. You should check out his YouTube channel. And his definition of hypertext was human-readable information linked together in an unconstrained way. I think the key idea here is being linked in an unconstrained way so that the principle along which you organize this information does not constrain what the information itself can be. By the time Berners-Lee wrote this document, there were already some systems that were available that could deal with hypertext, and they used this idea of hotspots in a document, which were basically links. And here he says, imagine that while reading this document, you could skip to them with the click of a mouse. This is how he described what we now know as clicking or following a link. So what are the requirements for such a hyperlinked system? The first one is you should be able to remotely access it across networks. CERN was a distributed organization with people working at multiple sites and you wanted them to be able to get at all this information no matter where they were. The second big requirement was heterogeneity, which means that you should be able to access this information from a wide variety of hardware systems, which is what people were using. The third big requirement was non-centralization, which means that you should be able to grow the system to link more information and to bring in more information without any central coordination or control. Any such central point would also end up becoming a bottleneck and a central point of failure. In my opinion, this is the key requirement or the key property of the proposal here that made it succeed compared to all the other hypertext proposals that were also floating around at the same time. Another requirement was that you wanted to bootstrap the system with your vast body of existing information and documents. So even though those existing documents were not in hypertext form, you wanted to bring them into the system as if they were hypertext. Another interesting requirement was the need to do data analyses on these nodes and links. Once you have captured the interconnection between documents as links, you can then go and automatically analyze them for structure or for extracting information. You also want the ability to have live links so that following a link does not always lead to a static document, but could reach into a database and fetch live data at the time you followed that link. This is basically how all dynamic modern sites work. It is really interesting to see that the problems of copyright enforcement and secrecy are explicitly called out as non-requirements. CERN, of course, is an academic scientific institution where there's much more stress on sharing information in an open manner rather than putting information behind walls. Now, around the same time, hypertext was actually an active area of research in computer science. There had been a couple of conferences, there had been a special issue of the CSCM that talked about hypertext. And so you could ask in hindsight, what made this proposal for hypertext so successful compared to all the other proposals that were also floating around at the same time? And you can point to a few things, the stress on heterogeneity of the systems accessing this, the stress on unconstrained links, but also the stress on portability. And now the author comes to some design questions for the system itself. One key design idea was to separate the information storage from the information display concerns. And as he explains over here, given that you're accessing this information over the network, it then becomes very natural to also have this separation be the same as 
the physical separation between the user and the remote database that is serving this information. In other words, you end up with a client server system where the client has browser programs that run on many platforms that talk to a hypertext server that serve this data. And the hypertext server could refer to information on other hypertext servers. So that was a quick look at the original paper that laid out the vision for the World Wide Web as a universal, unconstrained, linked information system with a big stress on generality and portability and non-centralization. And those are the properties that made it so wildly successful and that enabled the web to scale to the level that we see it at today. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.